World Munich Forum is starting now with our first speaker. Um, it's Steffi Kammermeyer, a very appreciated coaching colleague of mine. And Steffi is not only a very excellent coach, actually, she's also an award-winning a German screenwriter, a screenwriter. She's produced many, many very successful pieces. And she's a book author too, a very accomplished one. I think you wrote four books already, Steffi, right? And she has a training as a medical assistant. So she actually represents what many of our speakers today represent, which is a, a broad portfolio of skills that they've built up over time, what I typically call polymath. And Steffi holds also a degree in television and film and participated in a series of workshops at Actors Studio in New York in the field of dramaturgy. So Steffi, it's really an honor to have you here and guiding us through Bavarian mentality and in, it, in with which way everything that we associate with Bavaria can be helpful in building business and society for the future. Um, the session title by Steffi is called How Do We Convert Bavarian Mentality in a Successful Life? Very curious to hear what, what your thoughts are. She's born and raised actually in Bavaria, in this local city of Munich. So you will hear insights from the expert in a very entertaining way. Thanks, Steffi, and the stage is all yours. Oh, thank you very much, dear Yip, for the warm introduction. I'm very pleased to be able to give the keynote address for the World Munich Forum today. It's an honor indeed. World Munich, do you know that this already mentions one of the most important characteristics of my hometown, Munich, München, and world, the world, or as a Bavarian says, Dwayne. For us Bavarians, Munich is somehow the Nabel der Welt, the center of the universe. Today, I would like you to tell, to tell you something about this world. It's not a very big world. This Munich is with about 1.5 million inhabitants and a manageable 310 square kilometers. It's really not a world metropolis, but for us Bavarian is somehow, as I said, the Nabel der Welt, the center of the universe. As you probably know, the greater Munich area is the economic center of Bavaria. Here you will find not only innovative technology companies, startups or successful corporations, but above all, a highly potent population that generates a GDP of over 100,000 euros per person per year. This is one of the highest values in Germany. So it's no wonder that this forum was created in Munich. And it's no wonder that this is especially aimed at people who are successful or want to become more successful. Even more because we Bavarians are a pretty high performing, pre performing breed of people. And this despite the fact that we are sometimes said to be provincial and backwards. Today, I would like to tell you that this is not the case and why we Bavarians are ultimately very powerful. One thing first, our mindset as well as our dialect, which is the most popular in Germany, by the way, play a big role in that. I will explain to you why. But first, a few notes about myself. My name, as Yip said, is Steffi Kammermeier und da bin ich daheim. Seriously, I'm indeed a real Münchner Quax. And I still speak an authentic Bavarian dialect. Den kann ich noch ganz gut, das kann man hören. Professionally, I've been working with dialect for almost 40 years now, ever since I started film directing at the Munich Film Schools. In almost every one of my films or my books, people somehow speak in dialect. Because for me, it says a lot of where someone comes from and what his roots are. It is also, also a language of emotion 
So for actors, it's a brilliant tool to express themselves. I have my own documentary series on dialects at the Bavarian TV station. And I'm probably the only one who teaches our dialect in workshops. Not often in English, I must confess. <laughs> so it's a real challenge today. Today, I'll give you a glimpse of my expertise and a little impression of who the Bavarians are and how our language works with a little wink of the eye, of course. Bavarian is a dialect that is almost 1,300 years old and has been preserved until today. And this it can be resumed is due to a certain, let's say, stubbornness. The Bavarians, as you see here, like the Irish, Irish or like the people from Wales or the Gauls are descended from Celts and are thus in no way inferior to Asterix and Obelix in terms of, of unruliness. Perhaps this is why the Celts were very successful in Europe. They had a highly developed social structure practiced agriculture and animal husbandry, like the Bavarians. They went hunting with dogs and drank beer. However, it was not only Celtic genes that we Bavarians inherited back then. At some points, the Romans came into the picture. They became more and more powerful and started to conquer the world from Rome north to the north of the Alps about 2000 years ago. They covered almost all of Central Europe with soldiers, forts, and the Roman protective wall, the Limes, maybe you've heard of, about it, which in Bavaria, by the way, partly corresponds to the so-called Weißwurst Equator. This is where, where the Bavarians distinguish themselves from the Preisen. You may already know with the word Preis, a Bavarian sometimes marks a person who believes to be something better just because he speaks high German. A Bavarian has a hard time with arrogance because deep inside he's a justice fanatic and But back to the Romans. When they left a few centuries later, they left behind many descendants, remains of buildings, sometimes called the North Sea in Italy. And then around 600 AD, all kinds of bullies came along. Alemanni, Marcomanni, Lombards, Franks, even the Vandals and other Germanic peoples invaded the beautiful Bavarian country. From this fusion of Romanized cells and inflowing Germanic tribes emerge the Bavarians of today. As you can see, even then, this area had a great attraction for the Zurgerwasten. That's what we call new Bavarians. Genetically speaking, we are the incarnation of the Zurgerwasten. So actually, we locals are somehow also foreigners. Besides the Germanic remains in our language, there are still many Latin leftovers in our dialect today. For example, the greeting phrase servus comes from Latin servus, the servant. Ihnen zu diensten at your service. Therefore, is what the Bavarian means very politely when he greets you with servus. But attention, this does not fit in all situations as it seems very casual nowadays. 
you simply have to know that language is always a sociolect and usually adapts to the other person. So you talk to the doctor a bit honest than with a craftsman or a saleswoman. And it's definitely a sign of intelligence if you can vary your language. Because people used to think that dialect speakers were stupid and uneducated. They try to suppress any dialect for many years here, even in kindergarten. Today, we know that children who grow up with dialect are similarly intelligent as children who have bilingual parents. That's why I always point out in my workshops that dialect is actually like a foreign language that you can pull out of the drawer, means the brain box, Hirnkastel, such as English, French, or Italian language, including correct pronunciation, grammar, word order, which in some cases quite work differently in Bavaria. Here you should also know that Bayerisch Bavarian is thought and spoken to a very high degree in pictures. Since it was never a written language, the language serves mainly to describe processes and objects. That is clear, straightforward, and tangible. It is no coincidence that the majority of Bavarian linguistic metaphors come from agriculture and handicraft. There is, for example, an expression, der sauft wie ein Bürstenbinder. He's drinking like a brush binder. It's about a person who drinks barrels of alcohol. Brush binding was an extremely dusty affair. You had to counter it with liquid, preferable beer. So our visual language is a direct expression of what it's really about, emotionally, technically, and intellectually. A rather clever meta language, so to speak. By the way, new terms for which there is no Bavarian equivalent are usually linguistically assimilated and phonetically incorporated until they can stand on their own. Computer, for example, you should look how it's written. Business are now relatively easy to pronounce and can be understood internationally without the Bavarian having to bend, what he doesn't like actually. Popular among easygoing hedonists, always easy, alles wird gut, the story mit der linken hand. Of course, business or scientific language is primarily used for professional communication and discourse. That's why they are highly formalized and standardized. However, this is something the Bavarian is not very comfortable with. That's why he prefers to say, wir laften Geschäft, instead of, how is your performance doing this year? So to him, it sounds just artificial and somehow dishonest because he appreciates someone being straight and clear. Grad O, as we say. When someone practices what he preaches, that's what he likes. But by the way, the Bavarian was and is anything but obedient to authority. Just because someone has a higher position doesn't mean that a Bavarian will lick his boots. If he complies with regulations, it's only because he recognizes the benefit and the logic behind them. So if your business partner is reluctant, it's probably because he doesn't understand the benefits of your proposal. Another hint for you, it is better to avoid foreign words for which there are actually German equivalents, the background. Many people are not familiar with the attitude behind the use of foreign words and distrust everything they don't understand. 
Was der Bauer nicht kennt, frisst er nicht. What the farmer doesn't know, he doesn't eat. So, what the Bavarian doesn't get, you don't even have to present him, even if you shower him with arguments. Sometimes it's much better to remain silent or to express oneself only with a Bavarian grunt, as with ha or ake. Those who know Bavarian language well know anyway that they can tell whole stories with one or two words and the right intonation, or with a pause, which by the way, is also a typical Bavarian linguistic device, the silence between words. Du? Ja. Nix. Also. Above that, playing with words is a great pleasure for the Bavarian. It is the same with rhyming. But also with so-called homonyms, which are words that are spelled or sound the same, but have different meanings. I feel sorry for the people. Or my, my, my tut mir heute weh. Sorry, but my mouth hurts. This kind of play on words is part of the basic character of the Bavarians. It is change of perspective at its best. Yes, you have to listen carefully and have a feeling for the context in which a statement is made. Carefully listening, feeling, Are we really talking about the Bavarians? Aren't they the dull peasants, the beer goblins, the underprivileged, the grumblers? We were and are a peasant people, but it's not for nothing that we are somehow invited because of our dialect, but also because of our success and well, prosperity. But the Bavarian is not arrogant. Basically, he's only proud of what he has achieved through hard work, cleverness and diligence. There's nothing undeserved about it. There's simply a lot of effort involved. This nicht alles der Arbeit say. We'll say, you have to work for what you want to achieve. That's this Mir san mir, many people are talking about. Because he knows how much he can demand of someone to become successful, he acknowledges a person's achievement, even if he is an opponent or an enemy, by saying, a hund is a show. That's almost admiring. And it's because there's no either or here in Bavaria, that would simply not correspond to the famous liberalitas Bavariae, which somehow allows everything at the same time, as long as you don't interfere too much with each other. And last but not least, it's very the Bavarian is very pragmatic or rather economical, Perhaps it's because it's always been vital to conserve energy and achieve as much effect as possible with as little effort as possible. And this is something this conference is about. How do we achieve as much success as possible with as little effort as possible? I think there's a lot to learn here today. In this sense, macht es gut, lernt was gescheites, und seid schon für euch. Thank you for listening. That's me, part of me. Okay, I'm open to questions or whatever comment.
So. Yep, it is obviously I'm uh I'm here. I didn't uh, want to draw attention, you know, towards towards myself. But yeah, I, I I can imagine that you're quite busy today. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful task, right? To bring together the community to seek kind of the blockchain community for Munich. I actually love how you brought us like guided us through a little bit of the mentality and the thinking of the people who live here and have built this city over the past hundreds of years. So anybody who wants to ask any questions to really a, a, a local expert and Steffi has written many books, even including one that is a cookbook for Bavarian recipes, <laughs> where she did a lot of research into really understanding what is the local behind the scenes. It's not only a cookbook, Yip, it's, it's more about how people used to live, how, how they managed the living together. And uh, yeah. this shows very much how we deal with, with each other in, in a community. So it's very much uh, something like you have in your community as well. Uh, you, you find you, your special way. Um, and. Um, um, as you as you told in the beginning, I just wanted to make a little correction of what you said. Uh, I haven't been to New York to to uh, um, attend the workshops with John Kostopoulos, who was a famous uh, acting teacher. Uh, but he came here to Germany, and I was assisting him, and so it was almost the same. But missing New York, well, I this is what we're doing here time too. Drinking cappuccino. <laughs> Yeah, we're bringing the people to Munich. So I yeah. think you already lift the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish today with this forum. Maybe Steffi, for the last minutes of the session, can you share your perspective of what you think, you know, in, in which way technology might inform or disrupt what we are experiencing here every day, in particular from the perspective of a Munich local, what are fears? What are hopes? What has like you know been your experience with new adoption that has happened over the past decades? How was it adopted by the Munich or Bavarian ecosystem mentality, people who live here, governments? Yeah, well, a, a sort of me message is that you still can be very grounded and open up to the world. There is no uh, yeah difference uh, in in. Uh, uh, not difference, how do you say? Widerspruch, uh, what, what do you say? It's, it's not... Uh, contradiction. Yeah, contradiction, sorry. <laughs> I didn't get the word right now. It, there's no contradiction. It's, it's all the same to me. You can be uh, both. And this is what I said uh, about this Bavaria, Liberalitas Bavaria. No, where is it? Here it is. Liberalitas Bavaria. This is always meant to be open-minded, but at the other hand, being very much what you are. And I think communication always has to deal with these two aspects. And um, dealing with um, uh, money, for example, you know, or work is always communication in any sense. So you always should care about uh, that you still stay in contact with yeah. each other somehow and and keep talking keep uh, being yeah in a, in a big community how do we speak in a language or in a way that local let's say regulators for example would understand what is your just you know assessment <laughs> of, of that yeah. <laughs> what what <laughs> does a, a bavarian soul and a bavarian mind like to hear one reason, as I said, uh, why I work with dialect in my directing work or just writing screenplays or so, is that it's a language from the heart. So stay with your heart, stay, stay personally. Don't, don't formalize your communication, stay who you are. And everyone is different. We never, Everyone uh, has his uh, fail, failures or whatever. So don't be afraid. 
we are all in, the, all in the same boat. That's the message I would give you for today. We are in the same boat. So let's do the movement together and help each other. And well, so if someone is not perfect, so what? What does it mean not being perfect? It's good for nothing. And Bavarians are really not perfect. <laughs> they are just as they are with heart and sometimes stubbornness as i said but they are human beings and that's what i would love to see here and with you and um, i want to thank mary o'connor especially because you you had such a awake uh, view on me it helped me so much and i thank you what well, is nice communication we had. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Already connecting different communities, the Bavarian community with the Dublin community. So thank you very much for your um, message and your call to us to stay true to our hearts, Steffi. Yeah. 